Welcome to another Arizona Glass Classes tutorial. There's been some discussion on the forum recently about cleaning up vectorized artwork and also cleaning up raster artwork before vectorization. Most often you can get a better automated vectorization that requires less cleanup if you do a little pre-processing on the raster image first. The resulting raster image will take less time to vectorize, it will contain less nodes, and just works better all the way around. This tutorial will help demonstrate a few of the automated procedures using the mask tools in Corel Photo Paint to pre-process the raster image and what a difference it can make in the resulting vector output. This is an image that one of the users on a forum was having difficulties cleaning up after tracing. I thought it would be a good image to demonstrate with. Before going any further, I'm going to create a copy of the image so that we can view the before and after side by side. Next, I'm going to start Corel Photo Paint. I will open both images in Photo Paint and tile them side by side so that we can view the progress and changes. If you look at this, this area has quite a number of pock marks or holes, most likely caused because the original artwork wasn't solid black. There are some little fingers or peninsulas that stick out and inlets or coves that stick into the leaves. There are individual pixels sticking out by themselves, large flat areas, and it all combines to create kind of a crappy image to work from. If I fill in all these pixels with black before I trace the image, it would take a lot less time to vectorize. The same way, if I fill in some of these coves or peninsulas, I will get a much cleaner automated vectorization to work with, requiring much less manual cleanup afterwards. If I can do that in an automated manner, so much the better. What I will do is use the Color Mask tool to select just the black area to work with. Before I can do that, I need to increase the resolution, because if I'm going to smooth things out or fill things in, I'm going to need pixels smaller than I have now. What I want to do is to resample this. Make sure that the anti-alias option is enabled. This image is currently 72 dpi and I want to increase that by about 400% so that my pixels are one-fourth the size of the originals. So I'm going to assign a resolution to 300 dpi. If you look now, our pixels are much smaller and I have some gray pixels along the edges blending from the black to the white. That is what the anti-aliasing did and I will use them later. Next I'm going to use the color mask tool to select the area to work with. I'm going to modify the black, but if I use the color mask tool and select the black to create the mask for, you'll see I lost the grays. I could use the color mask tool and add some of the gray colors to the select option to select more of that area, but there's an easier way to do this. Let's remove that mask and select the white area to mask. Now I've created a mask that follows the same basic border but includes the grays in the selection. Next I'll use this tool and invert the mask. Now instead of the white being masked, the black and the grays are selected, which is just what I wanted. Now I can use some of the mask outline tools to manipulate that mask outline. Straighten it out, smooth it, fill in the pockmarks, peninsulas, coves, and get an outline much better for tracing. First thing I'm going to do is to expand the mask. This is expanded by four pixels right now. If you don't see the red area when you do yours, you need to click this button to preview the results. I can increase or decrease the mask expansion to get just what I'm looking for. If you notice, at two pixels, I still see some of the remnants of some of the coves. Three or four fills them in nicely. It also fills in our pockmark holes nicely. We want to remember that we expanded this mask by four pixels. Next I'm going to use the smooth option of the mask tools to smooth the outline of the mask. Again, I can adjust just how much smoothing and how much I want it to follow the original image. If you notice, at three I can still see some of the stair step in the image. Increasing the smoothing to six removes that. Now, since we expanded the mask outline by four, we'll reduce the new outline by the same value. If you look now, the new mask still basically follows the original area, 
and gives the intent but is much smoother. We've gotten rid of all the pockmark holes, the coves and peninsulas, and the resulting raster image will be much easier to trace and clean up. Now that we have the mask area where we want it, I will fill in that mask area with solid black. This tool here defines my foreground and background colors. I'm inverting the colors so that my foreground color is black. If neither of your colors are currently assigned to black and white, you can double click on the box and assign the color to the foreground or background area. I'm going to use my paint tool, and by default the largest brush size able to be selected is 100 pixels. As you can see, that would take quite a bit of time to color the entire area. I can type in any value I want for a brush size, so I'll type in 600 to make it easier to fill in the mask. Now I can paint over the entire mask with this brush and assign a solid black color to the entire mask area. If you remember when we finished creating our final mask, there were some areas of gray that extended through the mask outline into the white side. We're going to fix those now. I'm going to invert my colors so that my foreground color is white. Then I'll come up here and invert my mask. Now my mask is the white area and I'm painting with white, so I can go over the area again with the brush tool and clean up the rest of the image. You can see there's quite a big difference in the before and after images, with very little effort expended. I will now click here and remove the mask to save this for vectorization in Corel Draw. Next we'll use Corel Draw to vectorize the raster image. I'll create a blank drawing and import the raster image into the new drawing and then we'll trace it. If you notice, our output only has two colors, black and white. This is due to the work that we did pre-processing the image, making sure that there were only those two colors available. I'm now going to remove the background color from the entire image, and I'm going to adjust my smoothing to make the vector outline a little more smooth, and then we'll accept that. We now have a vector tracing, and depending upon what size you'll be etching it at, it may be acceptable as is. If you'll be using it for anything large, you may want to clean it up a little further. The output is, however, much better and cleaner already than if it had been the original image that had been vectorized. 